Good afternoon. This is Michael Toporek. I'm Chief Executive Officer of Saluna Holdings. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Uh, I'll begin with a bit of a preamble that the following discussion is completely qualified by the legal disclosures on the pages that follow this one. Our goal is to share with you some of our strategic thinking and financial analysis um, that we're using to guide the growth of our business. This discussion is in line with our principles of being accountable and transparent with shareholders. We operate in a hyper-dynamic economic environment. That's really a fancy way of saying things change quickly. What we're telling you here is based on our estimates and assumptions, which are our best guess. We reserve the right to revise our point of view based on new information and changes in the business. Despite an uncertain dynamic environment, we have to plan and make operating investment decisions. This presentation lays some of that out for your review. The following several pages are um, legal qualifiers that you should read at your, your own leisure. Page one, page two, page three. Before getting into the details of what we do, I wanted to be clear on a few points. This is an investor conference where capital market participants are looking for strong investment opportunities. There are many great companies at this conference. I want to tell you specifically about ours and why it's a compelling investment opportunity at current valuations. Before getting into that, I wanted to share with you some things that third parties have developed and independently of us as their points of view. They view us as trading a significant discounts to many of the public mining peers that you're seeing here today. They look at us and see best in class power costs and a top tier development pipeline. They also recognize the alignment of the management team and how we're incentivized to work on behalf of common shareholders. As investors, things that you look at are near term catalysts. Important catalysts for us that we can achieve for you as prospective shareholders is rapid revenue ramp. And as you can tell, we've done it from Q1 last year through Q4 this year. This is depending on Bitcoin price, what we anticipate to hit for Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Last year in the second quarter, we put out a illustration of our earnings power for the rest of the year. Our performance was very much in line with that. Last January, we put out uh, a very strong informational piece to our investors, again, illustrating the earnings power of the company for the next 12 months. What you're seeing here is extremely consistent with that. The next catalyst I'd like to discuss with you is growth in near-term hash rate. Our proprietary mining hash rate will grow over the second quarter by 36%. I'm sincerely hoping that investors recognize that and reward that growth with an accelerated share price. Some of the details behind that, and at the end of the first quarter, we anticipate hitting an exa hash in total. That's 284 peta hash as part of a uh, joint venture we have for hosting. And the remainder, about 716 peta hash for um, proprietary use. We anticipate growing that portion by another 261 petahash over the next quarter, so that we'll have approximately an exahash of proprietary mining. We're then expecting further growth in that into the third and fourth quarter, driving increased revenue, profits, and share price. So what makes us different than some of the firms that you're talking with or hearing from today? To crystallize that for you, I want to be clear and put it out on this one slide. Saluna is a leading curtailment solution provider to the renewable energy generation sector. We provide a solution to renewable power generators. They generate 
access power at certain times, we take that power and monetize it for them. The next part of the equation that also makes us somewhat different than many of the companies you're hearing from today is we plan to use that capacity over time for what we're calling dispatchable distributed dense computing. Let me share with you a few of our key operating principles. First is alignment of interests, transparency, and accountability. A private equity firm I help to manage owns about 30% of the common shares of this company. That makes our alignment with the common stockholders rock solid. In addition, every month you'll get detailed operating and financial data from us on every location. It's again, by month, by location, detailed operating and financial data. That kind of transparency helps drive accountability to our shareholders every month. Furthermore, it'll help you see what we're calling high velocity execution. In every quarter, we disclose certain return on invested capital metrics that'll really let you see our return on invested capital um, discipline and metrics in action. And I think part of what we're talking about here is a long-term strategy beyond crypto. Let's talk a little bit more about what we do. We're talking to, for example, wind farm operators about the curtailed energy and how they can convert that to dollars. That problem is global, it's significant, and we see ourselves as a solutions provider to the renewable energy sector, where realistically over the next three years, we see most energy projects being built uh, and specced out with um, some sort of curtailed energy user like compute on prem. That type of compute that can be on prem, it clearly has to be some sort of batch oriented computing that can flip on and off with the different loads. Uh, that are provided by the wind farm and the grid near the, uh, the wind farm. As a solutions provider, we're solving real problems for two constituencies, really. One is the power plant owner that's looking to monetize their curtailed power that's being generated. And the second is really the data scientist that's saying, I'm paying something like Amazon a great deal for batchable computing that I send them information and I get it back. The timing is, is not necessarily required to be always on and the information can be returned to me within a certain window. Those two factors alone uh, can significantly reduce cost. They're paying Amazon for an always on kind of service that they don't need and our data centers are specifically geared towards batchable computing which makes them much more cost effective for the data scientists so what's the size of the market opportunity for this kind of batchable computing well we all know that digital currencies are a form of batchable computing and current market size is let's call it 10 billion dollars in addition, there's pharmaceutical research, graphics and video processing, scientific research that can all benefit from moving to this kind of green batchable computing that, that we offer that will provide them with significantly more value. Our vision quite simply is that we're developing high performance data centers that increase the ability of renewable energy to be integrated into the grid. So right now that means we're doing zero carbon crypto mining and eventually expect to migrate to a significant portion of our revenue being zero carbon batchable computing other than mining. We believe that certain decisions we've made have really helped us from an operating perspective to be in a great position to maximize investor returns. First and most importantly, 
we've decided to develop projects that can operate at 2.5 cents or less per kilowatt hour in terms of cost of energy. The reason that's important is that according to our analysis, during the last crypto winter, 2018, 2019, one would have been cash flow positive nearly every day as a consequence of having power cost at that level. Furthermore, power cost at that level allows us to buy more flexibly from the technology market. We are not committed to having to buy the latest and greatest bleeding edge technology. We can buy a generation back and still earn tremendous returns on invested capital without having to pay a premium for that latest bit. Also, another operating decision we made is to have data centers that are incredibly flexible that can accept almost any type of processor. That puts us in a position to optimize our mix of processors from a return on invested capital point of view. Going back to our targets for 2022, you'll see that we put out there first quarter hitting an exahash, second quarter 1.261 exahash, third quarter 2 exahash, fourth quarter 3 exahash, first quarter next year 4 exahash. We've successfully demonstrated that we expect to hit that first quarter number based on plugs available immediately and equipment available immediately on the ground. We expect to hit that by the end of this month. Furthermore, we continue to be on track to hit the 1.261 for the second quarter. Again, that is a 36% increase in our proprietary hash rate that will drive further earnings acceleration. This is an important page. I'll, I'll leave you the time to spend on it, but this is where we re really lay out revenue and contribution margin scenarios, 20, 45, 60,000 for your review. We consider contribution margin after electrical cost and after personnel cost. There is some overhead cost that's not in that, that's underneath that line, and corporate costs are outside of that as well. What you will notice is that by the end of Q4 2022, we will be at, at 45,000 Bitcoin, approximately a 100 plus million dollar contribution margin run rate, which if you were to take out those other costs I mentioned, would leave us around $100 million, quote unquote, EBITDA number run rate for Q4 2022. We ex we've met our numbers last year. We expect to put our heads down, drive operations to try to meet these targets. So just to give you a quick business summary, I mentioned that we're on target at the end of March to hit uh, the one exahash based on equipment and plugs on the ground. 36% growth in hash rate into the second quarter. Our operations are continuing to scale. We have this new site we're building out called Dorothy, which I'll get into in a little bit. That's in full swing. And our project pipeline continues to be robust as our company becomes a leading curtailment solutions provider to the renewable energy business. In our earnings illustration in January, we put out a $300 million CapEx budget. Because of current market conditions, I would tell you that, that number is closer to 230, maybe 250. Um, that's really driven by crypto prices declining and hand in hand equipment prices decline. We're very fortunate in that we're able to raise capital on a project basis and on a corporate basis. On a corporate basis, We've raised some, some debt uh, and as well as um, some preferred equity. And on a project basis, we've raised some equipment and project debt as well as project equity or equity participations in, in certain segments of our projects. Um, I can get into that later um, in the Q&A if you'd like. So let's look at the facilities that we operate. We'll review each one our operating metrics, and how we measure success. Facilities are Edith, Sophie, Marie, and Dorothy. Edith was our first pilot project. 
up in Washington State. It's small, it's 2.6 megawatts. Um, Dorothy and, so uh, and Marie are both fully scaled in Kentucky, and Dorothy is a 100 megawatt facility located at a wind farm in Texas. So Edith, for example, is a mature facility. It's done very well for us. Um, the hash rate's down a little bit because we are in the middle of transitioning to new equipment, and we expect you know, uh, March and April hash rate to pick up and results uh, to pick up accordingly. I'm going to spend a moment here because this is very important. We release this graph by facility every quarter. We want you to measure us by the payback period on the capital we've invested. So in about 16 months, we achieved two times our return on capital on Edith. And we expect within 22 months, which will be sometime between the first and second quarter of this year, to hit three times our capital invested. This is how we hold ourselves accountable to putting money to work in these facilities for your benefit as shareholders. Sophie's scaling up nicely. An important thing happened as of March 1. Prior to March 1, we were in a ramp up power contract, which was a fixed price. Now we're back onto our variable price contract, which means that for 85% uptime, we're hitting costs between 2.5 and 2.7 cents per kilowatt hour. This facility was very specifically built next to a utility substation at the request of the utility. Why? Because they're taking more renewable energy onto the grid and they need an ability to balance out the grid. So they very specifically wanted our load there for specific times throughout the day and, and during the week. You'll see our return of capital here. We expect that'll happen 20 months, 21 months in um, by the end of Q4 2023 or early Q1 2024. This will be continuously update every quarter as we achieve our results. Marie is a site that uh, was a legacy hosting site for uh, another company. We bought it, the legacy customers rolled off a little earlier than planned, um, but we continue to ramp up the installation of our hash rate there and the success of this facility is part of the reason that we were able to make our hash rate number for the end of March. Again, our return on invested capital here, about 22 months in. On a consolidated basis for February, for example, the Bitcoin generator or the Bitcoin equivalent generated per day increased by about 16%. That kind of growth we anticipate to continue as I've mentioned earlier, between the first and second quarter. The other important thing that happened is the movement of Sophie to its long-term power contract as of March 1st that lets us operate at a lower power cost. That should drive increased margins going forward. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this page, but this is the kind of financial information you get on a consolidated basis from us, as well as on a by site information from us. That'll be in the appendix of this presentation. And this is the operating metrics that you'll see. Many of these metrics were already graphed in prior pages. A little bit on Project Dorothy. It has the capacity to grow to 150 megawatts. We plan to build out 100 megawatts. We've broken it into two phases power source directly from the wind farm and a bit from the grid to fill in when we can't pick up from the wind farm. Phase one is 50 megawatts that we broke between 1A and 1B. Phase two is another 50 megawatts that we broke between 2A and 2B. This is our timeline. We successfully began to break ground in February and March by preparing for uh, construction. We expect a modular data center to be erected from March to April and energizing 25 megawatts between May and June, and the next 25 megawatts between July and August. And the timeline for phase two is below. For Dorothy, for each 25 megawatt phase, we expect it to take up to 26 months to return all capital there. We have a development pipeline that exceeds 1.2 gigawatts. You'll notice it's global because the problem that we're solving 
is global and it has a variety of timing involved but we expect to monetize our intellectual property around solving the curtailment issue for power producers we expect to be successful with significant project finance partners that are um, equity and debt oriented to help us grow this pipeline out and monetize our know-how again thank you for having me at this conference i appreciate the time you spent and look forward to answering your questions